minutes from platform 3. The 755 Express for Bradley will be leaving in 5 minutes from platform 3. Excuse me. Oh. oh, sorry. Pardon me, I, I think there is room for one point here, is there not? Oh, yes, right here. So sorry to disturb you. No, it's all right. Thank you. Right. Oh, thank you. Funny-looking deck, man. <laughs> How do you play poker with these? <laughs> <laughs> They're tarot cards. You are familiar with the tarot? I wouldn't say that, but I've seen the cards before. Dr. Schreck. Doctor of metaphysics? The science which investigates the first principles of nature and thought. And nonsense. Schreck is a German word, isn't it? It means fright, uh, fear, something like that. The more exact translation would be terror. An unfortunate misnomer, for I am the mildest of men. However, I sometimes foretell things that are frightening. With these? They are the key, yes. The key? The key to what? Ancient wisdom. The tarot deck is a picture book of life. An answer to the deepest questions of philosophy and history, and sometimes a means of prediction. 
Like uh, fortune telling. Avika. What kind? There is within each of us a twin destiny. The natural and the supernatural. The cards are attracted to the supernatural part of that destiny as one pole of a magnet attracts an opposite pole. Supernatural part? The strange, the weird, the unknown, the terrifying, the mysterious. At one time or another during our lives, we may, any one of us, encounter it. This deck can forewarn us. I call it my house of horrors. How does it work? The person whose fortune is to be told touches the cards three times. Then they are shuffled and dealt. The first four cards predict his destiny. The fifth gives him the knowledge to change it, if change is possible. Really? Do we have to suffer all this nonsense? There's no harm in it. Astrologers, spiritualists, table rappers, the entire lunatic fringe. They've been exposed for the charlatans they are over and over again. I don't know, I don't know. A gypsy once told me that I was going to get an unexpected gift. And that very day, I walked under a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> the tarot deck is a serious matter. The cards predict the truth, the supernatural truth, always. Anybody who believes that will believe anything. Perhaps you would like to learn your future. Just tap the card. I must warn you, gentlemen, this is undoubtedly a well-rehearsed prelude to some shabby form of confidence trick. You can fool all these others as much as you please, doctor, but kindly leave me out of it. Well, how about me? Come on, I'm game. You are not afraid. Oh, it's going to happen to me anyway. What's that to be afraid of? Very well. Tap the cards three times. I do not manipulate them. They use my hands to manipulate themselves and to present your destiny. The chariot, the high priestess, the moon, the enchantress. Why? Yes. Yes, you do that. I will. Goodbye. Oh, how they talk. Are you busy? Yeah, working on the Watterson project. Oh, there's no rush for that. This letter came this morning from that Bidarf woman you sold your house to. She wants to make some major structural alterations and seems to think that you are the only architect to deal with it. Oof. Hmm. Doesn't say what alterations they are. Does it matter? A lonely widow, rich, beautiful, you know, I'd be glad to spend a few days on that island with her myself. Hey. Hey, if it's no Mr. Jimmy. Caleb. How good to see you. Well, I didn't expect you back, sir. Well, Mrs. Bidolf wrote and asked me if I'd give her some advice about altering the house. Is there anyone at home, do you know? Granddaughter, Valda. Ah, Valda, is the mistress in? Upstairs, Grandfather. Come in.
You were about this high the last time I saw you. Oh, Mr. Dawson! How wonderful! I'd no idea you'd be here so soon. Well, I was free, and naturally, I was interested in the house. I'm very grateful to you, by the way, for calling our firm <laughs> for the job. Oh, Valda, will you prepare the guest room for Mr. Dawson, please? Come in here. Seem to have changed very much. What exactly did you want done? Well, what I want principally is to have wall not done to make one large room. You know, like a ballroom. Well, that shouldn't be any problem, should it? No. No, I don't think so. But it's an old house. I want to examine it very carefully before I make up my mind. Well, I thought you'd know it better than anyone else. Yes, I should. My family lived here for centuries before I had to sell it. Still, I think I'd better look at the foundations and the walls and everything very carefully before we decide to make any radical changes. Well, I have to get down to the village for an hour or so. If there's anything you want, just ask Caleb or Valda. May I ask you a personal question? If it's not too personal. Why does a beautiful woman like yourself want to bury herself in the Hebrides? My husband was... was a very wonderful man. It took me a long time to get over his death. In fact, after the funeral, I had a sort of breakdown. The doctors decided that I needed complete rest and quiet. So I came here. And now, you've decided you want to rejoin the human race, eh? Why'd you say that? Well, you're having this room made into a ballroom. Oh, that's not for entertaining. You see, my husband was an archaeologist. He had a large collection of very valuable specimens from all over the world. I intend to turn this into a sort of museum to his memory. It's a beautiful house. And you're welcome to visit us any time. Thank you. What was that? I didn't hear anything. key to the cellar is? No, sir, I don't. Well, would you be good enough to ask your grandfather if he knows? Yes, sir. It's been oiled recently. Well, that's strange. 
I didn't do it. Here's a torch for you. Caleb, do you know what this is? It must be the coffin of Cosmo Valdemar. The werewolf. Over 200 years ago, Cosmo Valdemar claimed that this house was really his. And that my ancestors had stolen it from him. But he vowed that one day he'd return. And he swore that his place would be taken by whoever owned the house. And that he himself once again assume human shape. His grave was never found. Here, in the walls of the cellar, for all this time. Not all this time. This plaster is new. I'm going to find out what's in that coffin. Come on, give me a hand. Something stronger than this. Mrs. Biddulph, did you see anything come out of the house? No. Well, what's the matter? Nothing. Here, let me give you a hand with those. Oh, thank you. The only thing I don't like about living on this island is the fact that the shops won't deliver.
Oh, put them down there, will you? Oh, I see you found the key. Uh, no. No, Caleb had a spare one. Will you have to work down there? Uh, yes, yes, I think so. Well, how long do you suppose the work will take? Just a short time. Mrs. Biddulph, has anyone been down in that cellar since you moved in? Well, I suppose the workmen went down there. I haven't. Why? Doesn't matter. your door. Oh. Caleb, what did the legend say? That Cosmo would return and take his revenge on the owner of the house. Do you know that Valdo left me a note tonight saying she had to see me? She knew something about it. Do you have a gun? Aye. Get it. What are you going to do? Something came out of that coffin tonight. Something evil and strange. I don't know why it killed Valda. But I know who it's going to kill. My great-grandfather had this made out of the silver sword that killed Cosmo. It's hung in the house ever since to protect it. I'm going to melt it down and make bullets. Silver bullets. Often opens tomorrow night. I'll be waiting. Legend says the only way to kill a werewolf is with a bullet made from a silver crucifix. I had six. You mean these?
You see, what the legend really says is that Cosmo Valdemar will resume human shape again when he's replaced in his coffin not by the owner of the house, but by a descendant of the man who killed him. Now, any dutiful wife would do anything to bring her husband back to life, even after 200 years. <laughs> Trying to tell me that's going to happen to me. Where are you going now? Gladly. And then? To the island of Unger, in the Hebrides. Turn the fifth card. Well, what was it? Nothing. What was that card? Tell me. Don't be so gullible. Can't you see it's all part of the act? What act, Mr. Marsh? Is your name Marsh? Don't be misled by his knowing that. There's no magic about it, I assure you. Yeah, but how did he know? Maybe it's on the baggage. There's no mystery about it, gentlemen. Most informed people have heard of Franklin Marsh, art critic. Confidence tricksters make a point of being familiar with people in the news. Well, I've never heard of you. Dr. Shrek, I'd like to try those cards. If you don't mind. Yeah, they will show them. And now, your prediction. You are going on holiday soon. Hello. Meet your wife and your daughter. Daughter? How did you know? It's perfectly simple. He saw the doll up on the rack. And a dog. That's right. You'll see them all when we get to Bradley. They're meeting me at the station. When you return from holiday. And when you return. What is it? What is it? Bill! It seemed to cry out in pain when I hit it. And I couldn't cut into it with the hoe. Give me the shears. I could almost swear that vine pushed those shears out of my hands. Have you ever seen anything like this before, Jerry? Mm -hmm. Ah, it's new to me. You say this vine seemed actually to resist cutting. Well, I'm pretty good at handling garden tools. I don't think those shears slipped. Uh, you think you'll put me up for a few days? Mm, sure. Easier to find out what this is all about on the spot rather than peering through a microscope here at the Ministry. Yeah, true. I'm sorry, 
Mr. Drake. It's all right. Go after this one, Master. I'll get Rusty's in a minute. All right. Rusty, go after it. Go after it. Oh, 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 oh. Strangled by a vine. I can hardly believe it. A plant that protects itself? It's impossible. Hmm. Well, that's what I thought at first, but uh, have a look at this. Now, uh, well, these are the main groups of plants whose existence we already know. Uh, first, uh, plants without root stems or leaves, uh, bacteria, and uh, lichens, fungi. Now, after that, um, mosses, a, a slightly higher form, with neither roots nor vascular tissue. And a third, ferns, which have roots and vascular tissue, but uh, no flowers. A fourth, uh, uh, flowering plants. Now, they have roots, stems, leaves, vascular tissue, and flowers to help them spread their seeds. Now, finally, in uh, uh, just one second, there we are. Uh, what we call the insectivorous plants, so the borderline between the plant and animal kingdoms. Plants which are not dependent entirely on uh, soil and sunlight for their food, but which sometimes eat live insects. Yeah. You see, each stage, each uh, adaption, each uh, mutation is, is one step higher in the battle of the plant kingdom for survival. Now, what if a what if a plant were to take the next step? And what if there were a, a mutation that could develop intelligence, the, the ability to protect itself, perhaps even to know who its enemies were and uh, destroy them? A plant like that could take over the world. But it's not possible. It's fantastic. Mm. I wonder. Lunch will be ready in a few moments. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, well, I, I'm really awfully busy at the moment. You mind if I skip lunch today? You have to eat something. I'll get you some coffee and sandwiches. Oh, thank you. Her brain? I was right. It's a lovely day. Why don't you go out and play? It isn't any fun without Rusty.
call the police? We didn't know what to do. We, we thought we'd better call you first. He was alone in the room. Yes, all the time. which every intelligent thing is afraid of, fire. If a species ever develops it isn't, it could be the end of the world. Open the door. does not matter. What was it? I was hoping it, it might not be. Oh, for heaven's sake. What is all this nonsense? No nonsense, I assure you. Now, is there anyone else who would wish to try? First time I've ever done this without chips. Just tap the carbs three times. What now? Your future. You are a musician? Yeah. A lot of people don't seem to think so. <laughs> ah, that's more like it.
That's my mother-in-law. <laughs> Do not jest at the image of a god. God? The powerful and malign god of Voodoo. A good word. You're gonna love me. Oh, yeah. Purely as a mother. I've, I've got a great booking for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. What you got is this time? Siberia? No. Nah. Days of sunshine and romance. Nights underneath an azure sky. Another holiday camp, right? The West Indies. Island of Paiti. Town of DuPont. Club called the Flamingo. Good? Yeah, great. When do we go? Two weeks. Hey, you little sweetheart. We're going to go to the West Indies, fella. That's great. We're going where? <laughs> We're going to the West Indies. The West Indies. Ah, well, on that sweet note, boys, we can all get ready to go to the West Indies. <laughs> Singing, dancing, and drinking rum. Boys and girls kissing in the sun. Everybody's got love. Cupid's busy here every day. Shooting arrows up every way. Young and healthy or old and gray. Everybody's got love. Just look at me. Or talk to anyone. Hey, you say, what about this thing? Everybody's got love. Come on, everyone, don't be shy. Hey, no, I told you the reason why. Kiss your troubles and cares goodbye. Everybody's got Come on, everyone, don't be shy. Now I've told you the reason why. Kiss your troubles and cares goodbye. Everybody's got love. La 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 Everybody's got love. Everybody's got love. Everybody's got love. Hi, I'm Sammy Coyne. You must be my replacement. Yeah, that's right. This is Alan. Toby. Yeah, right. Hey, I, uh, I dig that calypso music, man. It's uh, it's good, sung by a real West Indian. But West Indian? You must be joking. I came out the East End. The first music I heard was Bo Bells. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How come you're here, then? Well, you got an agent. I got an agent. For 10%, he'd book me in Little Rock. <laughs> Cigarettes, please. Oh. Yeah, sure, I... Uh... I think I'm old enough to smoke. <laughs> hey, look at that monster. What did I do? That monster is a voodoo goddamn violent. And voodoo is the one thing you don't mess around with here. Look around. Hey, all the chicks are wearing them. Yeah. 
I've heard of these voodoo dancers. That's where the action is at night, isn't it? Yeah. And you'll hear it from your hotel room. Yeah? Out in the woods. Drums beating. Yeah. Girls dancing. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Frenzied. Yeah. Very few clothes on. Yeah. You take my advice. Forget it. Why? Man, it's a religious ceremony. So? You ain't that denomination. <laughs> <laughs> listening to your music, so I, uh, I, I wrote it down. You wrote down the sacred music of the great god Dambella. <laughs> it could be, it could be a hit. Make, make, make a fortune. Uh, if, uh, if, if you uh, wrote it, um, we could go 50-50. It belongs to the god Dambala, known only to his own people. For centuries. Oh, well, well, if it's that old, then it's out of copyright. I can just take it up. Give Chrissy my shirt. The god Dumbala is a jealous god. If you steal from him, he will be revenged. Wherever you are, he will be revenged. Do not steal from the god Dumbala. Now, go. <laughs> When we get back to London, I'm going to make a whole routine around that voodoo number. Beth, man, you be careful. That voodoo, oh, Ah, so... don't be silly. It's dangerous, man. What can a voodoo god do to me? Oh, oh. <laughs> Give 
give me your shoulder to cry on, your heart to rely on. Give me love, prove it by the way that you hold me. You mean all that you told me. Give me love, give me something more than just a promise or two. Show me real affection and I'll give my love to you. Take me in your arms and then kiss me. No more false alarms, baby. Give me love. You still going through that voodoo thing, man? Sure, why not? I'll tell you one thing. You got guts. Thanks. We'll probably see them before the night's out. Spread all over the floor. They'll eat anything here. Don't worry, though. My uncle's an undertaker. He'll do it for you wholesale. Don't forget the double-breasted lid. Give me something more than just a promise or two. Show me real affection and I'll give my love to you. Take me in your arms and then kiss me. No more false alarms, baby. Give me love right now. Give me love. During his recent trip to the West Indies, Biff Bailey heard an ancient voodoo tune. Here it is, in his own special arrangement.
Yeah. I could have the whole place redone. Moroccan. Oh, man. You go playing around with voodoo. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going to change this arrangement, actually. It wasn't too good in the middle, so I think I'll take it home. Take it home? After what happened here? What happened here? Who do you think sent that wind? Kenny Ball? Uh, that was voodoo, man. I'd burn that music fast. Look, you're not still believing in this voodoo stuff, are you? No, man. But I pay the percentages. I wouldn't take that home. Not after what happened here tonight. No. I'll see you. Well, more work for my uncle. Way to pick it at least circus, Mac. Yeah, yeah. Ah, these British are all nuts.
teach me not to steal tunes. Well, how do I get out of it? Ours was the same. What does it mean? I'll tell you what it means. Absolutely nothing. What makes you so sure? For telling the future with a pack of cards. Complete rubbish. Sam, why are you afraid to try so? Afraid? <laughs> to participate in your ridiculous parlor game. Very well. Very well. Shuffle your cards. Foretell my destiny. Remarkable. Really remarkable. Well, I don't think there's very much more that we can say about that particular atrocity. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Yes, atrocity is right. Now, what have we here? Yes, indeed. A work of notable incompetence, even from Mr. Eric Landor. You don't like my work, Mr. Marsh? Ah, the great man himself. One wonders why you come to my exhibitions so regularly, if my work displeases you. Duty, my dear sir, duty. My paper pays me to attend these exhibitions, so attend them I must. Whether the artist in question is a genius or a charlatan. And you consider yourself competent to judge. I don't feel that my reputation as a critic has ever been called in doubt. In that case, I wonder why you never give me advice on how to improve my work. My dear sir, the only advice that I could possibly offer you would be give up. <laughs> A harsh thing to say to a man who's been painting all his life, with some measure of success. Success? If we are discussing money, pray, let us not delay you any longer. I was under the impression we were discussing art. Take this masterpiece, for example. Just what is it supposed to say? It is merely a series of splodges of paint applied without any creativity whatsoever. What is it supposed to mean? Oh, nothing specific. The viewer is supposed to react to it, to create his own meaning out of his own experience. So everyone will see something quite different in it. In other words, it means absolutely nothing. To those who can't see. But I can see, Mr. Lando, I can see very well when there's something worth seeing. I live by my vision, Mr. Lando. Mr. Marsh, we have a canvas in from a young artist we're thinking of exhibiting shortly. I wonder if you'd mind telling us what you think of his work. Well, it's highly irregular. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Well, very well, just this once. Thank you. Ah, now, this is quite a different matter. Quite a different matter indeed. Clearly the work of a creative artist of considerable promise. Notice the wide sweep of colour, the balance, the brushwork together with a certain denial of the accepted standards, the mock critical humour of the entire composition. You could learn a great deal about painting from this artist, Mr. Landor. Then I should very much like to meet him. Would that be possible? He's here now, as a matter of fact. Indeed. <laughs> My lords, ladies and gentlemen, we have as our guest of honor tonight the eminent author and art critic Mr. Franklin Marsh. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, I am extremely honored to have been asked to address this fine organization which has done so much to foster an interest in the arts. 
The world of art today, the world of art today, The day of the action painter is over. Soon art will regain its sanity and return to the fundamental representational principles of... You were saying, Mr. Marsh? Uh, I, I must crave your indulgence. I have a pressing appointment. Oh, he's so fascinating on this subject. Found out who the patient is yet, nurse? Yes, Eric Lander, the artist. Artist? Not anymore. The European Space Research Organization plans to ask the United States for permission to set up a satellite tracking station in Alaska. In London, the well known artist Eric Landor was the victim of a hit and run driver. Mr. Landor was taken to St. Michael's Hospital. He has not yet regained consciousness. Don't seem to be coming very easily today. Well, what you need is a drink. What? No, no, thank you very much. I've got to get home. Come on, just a quick one. Oh, thank you very much, George. I really must get on with this. Oh, all right.
is it? Who is it? Wherever you've been for the past few days, it certainly improved your temper. Well, don't tell me he actually liked a painting for once. <laughs> well, I had a slight problem, but everything's all right now. Oh, well, that calls for a celebration. What are you going to have? No, no, no. Drinks are on me. Uh, miss, please. The same again, Lily, please. I heard you calling around, Frank. You know, that's too good to miss. Yes. Yes, please have anything you want. Anything at all. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. He hurt bad. He'll live. Yeah. 
But he'd be blind for the rest of his life, poor guy. Still, there's lots of things a blind man can do. A very pretty story. Thank you. It is not all the story. And it's the same for all of us. What do you mean? Every time the cards have been asked how we can avoid the future, the answer is the same. Yes. That's a bad word, man. Well, let's see what the cards have to say about me. You are sure you wish to know? Deal the cards. The Empress, the Hermit, the Star, the Lovers. What? It's an old American custom. Et ceci est une vieille coutume française. What? Old French custom. Yeah, the custom. Coutume. Cut, cut. Coutume. Tune. No, coutume. Tune. Welcome to Pemberton. Prettiest little town in New England. I hope it likes me. Honey, it could not help but like you. You know, I was worried about coming with you to America. You're going to get on just fine. Are you hungry? Hmm. I'll go. I'll go see if there's something in the kitchen. To eat. You can go on and, uh, and get acquainted with the house, okay? Okay, you can have the car. <laughs> Dr. Blake's going to come pick me up anyway. Who is Dr. Blake? Dr. Blake? Dr. Blake is the only other doctor in town, and we work at the clinic together, and he's going to... 
That'll be him now. Come on, honey. I know he wants to meet you. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Doctor, this is my wife, Nicole, Dr. Blake. Oh, glad to know you. I hope you like our fair city. I'm sure I will. If there's anything I can do for you, don't hesitate to tell me. Thank you. All set? It's been nice meeting you. Bye, honey. And drive carefully, eh? I will. <laughs> Well, you say it is a strange case. Sounds like anemia. No, no. No, it's not the quality of the boy's blood that's wrong. It's the quantity. I mean, it's like there doesn't seem to be enough of it. The boy's in here. Do you want to see him? All right. Johnny, this is Dr. Blake. Hi there, Johnny. Good morning. Good morning, Doctor. Dr. Blake, I'd just like to have a look at you, okay? Well, now, uh, Johnny been eating his food? Yes. Getting enough sleep? Fresh air? Well, he, he always sleeps with his window open. Well, let's have a look. When did he get these? Just a few days ago. The day he complained he was feeling weak. All right, thanks. Well, will you wait in the other room? Come on, Johnny. Would you come this way, please? Yes, thank you. Well, what do you think? I really don't know what to make of it. What do you think? I don't know. If these were medieval times, I'd, I'd almost say he was the victim of a, a vampire. <laughs> a vampire? Yeah, that's what Dr. Blake said. Can you imagine, in this day and age, he took some blood samples from the boy, though. And we should know by tomorrow morning what it really is. How will he know? Well, they run some tests on it in the laboratory tonight, and we'll... He has a laboratory in the clinic? No. No, he's got a workshop on top of the old Finch building. He works there at night sometimes. He's a real lonely guy. Do you want, do you want, do you want some more steak, honey? No. Why didn't it attack you then? I figured that out later. My arms made the sign of a cross as I raised them to shield myself. How could it know that I suspected? Dr. Blake, your patient is ready.
Did he sleep with his window open last night? That's not wrong, is it? He must have fresh air. No, no, it's not wrong. Leave it open. It's only that tonight, I want to be there in case anything happens. Close the window. I caught my hand. Nicole is my wife. You know what a vampire is? It's a spirit that takes up residence in a human body, conferring upon it the power to turn into a bat at night so that it can glut itself on the blood of innocent victims. And if the victim dies, he becomes a vampire, and after death rises from the grave and walks the earth in search of blood. That would have happened to Johnny if he died of Nicole's bite. It may happen to her next victim. Tonight, she'll go in search of someone. Watch her. The only way to kill a vampire is to drive a wooden stake through its heart. Watch her when she returns. Vampire? But it's true. I never heard anything so crazy in my life. Look, Dr. Blake will confirm it when he gets here. Confirm what? That my wife was a vampire. Well, that's nonsense. There are no such things as vampires. But you told me. You gave me the stake. She attacked you. I don't know what you're talking about. Nobody attacked me. Oh, tell them, please. Tell them. Go on, Philip. Tell them. Let's go. 
Go to the doctor, please. Can we give you a lift, doctor? No, no thanks. I won't. Okay. This town isn't big enough for two doctors or two vampires. Someone by that name? I met her on the continent, I was thinking. Turn the next card, please. Hey, 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 hey. There are five of us here. And none of us has a future. What about him? Yes. What about you? It's this train. It's gonna crash. What are you doing? Well, the communication Don't cord. be such a fool. It's the one way you might cause an accident. Sit down. We can't all just sit here and wait. Why have you done this? What do you want? Who are you? If you're not gay. Down. Is it Bradley? Can you see a sign? Don't know. Well, uh, where else could it be? We've reached the end of our journey. No accidents. So much for Dr. Terror. Thank you. 